All right, everybody, welcome back to Free America. So today, we're going to take a quick look at these three fighting knives, which are produced by the Utica Cutlery Company after the Second World War. I'm going to tell you why they look different. So, if that's the kind of stuff that interests you, Stick around. All right, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. So, like I said, today we're going to look at these Utica Cut Co. Utica Cutlery Company uh, combat knives. And... This is an interesting um, group, and, and I'll show you why. So, Utica, you, might, you may be familiar with the Utica Cutlery Company. For the past few years, they've made um, a couple different kinds of survival knives and so forth. But they actually started their operation uh, in 1910. So, in spite of the fact that these look like World War II era Mark IIs, uh, they're not. Utica never made Mark II's during World War II, but they did make M1 carbine parts. They made M1 Garand bayonets. They made M3 fighting knives, and they made M4 bayonets. These are post-Korean conflict Mark II's, and they were available to all of the surfaces. So, prior um, to the history I'm about to give you, they were only available to the Marine Corps and the Navy. Um, so, in 1952, Congress passed a law consolidating the defense supply system under Title X U.S. Code. Uh, that law effectively did away with the separation of acquisition activities between the now defunct War Department and the Navy Department. In 1961, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara ordered that all defense supply agencies be consolidated into one agency, and the defense supply agency was established on October 1, 1961 and began operations on January the 1st, 1962. Under this order, the new Utica knives were got a new designation, and the designation was knife, comma, combat, comma, MIL-K-20227. So this is the knife combat mill K20227. You'll hear people refer to mill K knives. Um, so now, these knives were available to all services uh, through the consolidated catalog. Now, you may notice the background here. This is a Vietnam era uh, ERDL camouflage pattern jacket. Um, and the interesting thing about this pattern is it was also available to all the services. So the Marines and the Army wore these extensively during Vietnam. And I think you see some Air Force security police guys wearing these as well. So Utica began producing the Mil K20227 for the government in 1961, and they were the first company to produce these types of knives, these Mark II style knives, after World War II. The Utica knives are the only post-World War II knives that retain the curved guard. So you'll see that the finger guards on these knives are, are curved uh, the way that World War II knives were. The markings changed on all of these knives, along with the nomenclature, right? So now, the new knives had to be marked U.S. over the company that manufactured them. In this case, U.S. over Utica Cut Co., which is a cutlery company. They were initially made like this, brown leather, nine rivet sheathed, brown handle. Um, this is actually kind of a coating that goes between the, the metal and the leather. Um, and then, in 1962, they started producing knives with this dark brown antifungal coating right and you can see how it's it's a coating on top of the leather it's not really dye right
Uh, oh, by the way, all of these knives had uh, gray zinc phosphate parkerized blades. Um, <clears throat> so the early knives, well, all of these knives have flat pin fumbles, right? And the pins are ground. You see that? So you can't really see them, right? It's all it's done the same way on all of these knives. And when they did that, the funny part is they scraped the paint off. <laughs> so <laughs> um, interesting. So in 1963, by order of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David Shoup, all leather gear worn by Marines was to be black in color, right? So now they had all this brown and tan gear, and the Commandant said, make it all black. So this is an example of this sheath, right? A nine rivet sheath that has been dyed black in compliance uh, with the Commandant's order. So you can see it, it pretty much looks brown. Uh, there's some, you see some streaks where the, uh, the dye was applied, but really you can see it really good right here uh, where the black dye was smeared on the inside of the, the snap strap. On the back side, you can see it wore off pretty quickly. Um, and then later they went to producing um, a black sheath. So here's a black sheath. Here's a knife with what appears to be a uh, black stained um, handle, right? So it appears to be similar, this same style of knife. You can kind of see some blackening down here at the bottom like this. Uh, and the whole thing, of course, has been blackened to match the general's order. Now, here's another interesting piece of equipment I wanted to show you. So this is a uh, World War II era M3 shoulder holster um, for the 1911 pistol. And, and these were common among aviators as well as tankers and, you know, people who wanted to wear this kind of holster. Um, this one, as you can see, is black, right? But if you look real close, again, you can kind of see the brush marks where it was, where it was dyed brown. So if you look at the strap, right, you can see where it was dyed, it was dyed. And I'm sorry, this thing's all on a knot. Down here, they just kind of gave up on dyeing it. And the back is still brown, right? Interesting. So this is the kind of stuff that you see, right, that was dyed in compliance with the Marine Corps quarter that all their leather gear had to be blackened. So, let's take a quick look at them, right? Here you can see the the parkerizing on the blade pretty well. This one's dinged up just a little bit. Handle's in great shape. Flat pommel with the pin. You can see where the pin was ground, right? They all have matching US Utica Cutco stampings. And all of these are war horses. They've all, these are all used knives. They've been there uh, quite a while. Been there and done that, I should say, you know. This is the earliest version. So this was a 1961 version knife, right? And you can see the, the parkerizing is gone. So I hope this was entertaining, uh, educational. I hope you had fun uh, watching it. Maybe you learned something interesting about these kinds of knives. Um, thanks again uh, for joining me today. I, uh, I appreciate it. So if this is the kind of content uh, that you like, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And I don't make a whole lot of videos, so I'm not going to fill your inbox with spam about videos that I've just, you know, produced. So 
once again, thanks for joining me here in Free America. God bless America.